Good evening and a warm welcome. I'm Rahul Kamul. You're watching India today. We've got breaking news coming in at the top. Attorney General KK Venugopal says a solution will soon be found. Judges will use all their experience, will use all their wherewithal, and will be able to resolve this big judicial crisis by tomorrow. Joining us live and exclusive now on India Today is India's Attorney General KK Venugopal. Mr. Venugopal, welcome. What do you, as the government's top lawyer, make of this huge judicial earthquake that's blown up in the face of our nation this afternoon? Jim, uh, I have already told the PTI that this press conference with the media all being there could have been avoided and uh, any alternative method of putting over their objections could have been uh, selected or resorted to. But now that I'm satisfied that all the judges are persons of statesmanship and vast experience and wisdom, I have no doubt whatsoever that by tomorrow they would all be able to completely neutralize this dissension which has been there to bring about total harmony and restore the confidence of the people and the litigant public in the dispensation of justice by the Supreme Court. Mr. Okay. Mr. Venugopal, you're one of our senior most lawyers. You're an eminent constitutional lawyer yourself. You're saying that they should have resolved this internally, but naturally these judges felt suffocated in anguish to a level where their anger came out. What do you make of what happened behind the scenes where these judges say they reached out to the Chief Justice, but he wouldn't listen? I think all that is putting it too high. I mean, this is some little uh, disputes that were there about allotment of uh, cases, and uh, therefore it is not something which... Uh, what was uh, uh, what is said uh, to bring it to the realm of uh, anguish and so on. Eh? Therefore, let us uh, wait and see, rather than uh, have it blown up uh, to a very great extent. Mr. That is what is required. The opposition yes. is alleging that the Modi government is excessively interfering in the manner in which the Supreme Court is being run. Your response? Modi government has made it very clear that they will not in any manner interfere in the matter. I, the Minister of State for Law and Justice has made that statement and therefore uh, you would not have found any statement coming from the, uh, uh, from the government. Okay. Do you believe, very quickly, one or two more questions, sir. Do you believe this is a small matter or a serious judicial crisis? Only one more question. Sir, is this, ah, a, tell me. Is this a small matter in your view or do you think it's a serious judicial crisis? No, I don't think there is a crisis because what can be resolved straight away can be a crisis, but I only wish it had not happened. That's all. So one more question okay. before you go. Have you reached out to these four judges who have revolted against the Chief Justice? You are saying it will be resolved tomorrow. What gives you the confidence that it is a matter that can be resolved? No, I'm sorry. I can't answer all those questions. Okay, one okay. final question, Thank sir. No, one, one final question, Mr. Venugopal. People's faith in the judiciary has been shaken like never before. As India's Attorney General, what do you have to say to people who are now wondering whether India's Supreme Court is compromised, sir? No, you see, if this is a matter of two days, today and tomorrow, then there is a question of it's being compromised. I have no doubt that the judges will rise to the station and all of them will look at the interests of the institution and the integrity of the institution and will seek to maintain it. And if that is done, I think you should tell your viewers, please forget this as an unpleasant dream. And okay. for those who are watching, you are telling us you think that the Supreme Court is not compromised, it's not bent, that cases are not selectively being given to judges so that you can get a favorable judgment, sir? If it is totally neutralized, straight away, then the Supreme Court is not compromised in any manner. Okay? That's very good. I'm going to Thank leave you. it there. Thank you very much, Mr. K.K. Venu Gopal, India's Attorney General, speaking first and exclusive to India today. Now, what's very interesting to my mind as a political observer 
is the last line of what the Attorney General just said. If this matter is neutralized very quickly, then there is no reason to believe that the Supreme Court is compromised. The question is, what if it doesn't get resolved very quickly? What then will we make of what we've seen today? This is no less than a judicial earthquake. The Attorney General called this a small matter. It is not a small matter by any stretch of imagination. Never ever in recent history since the time of the emergency have we seen judges coming out publicly and speaking against the Chief Justice. This is, make no mistake, the biggest judicial crisis we've seen in decades. The administration of the Supreme Court is not in order. We try to collectively persuade the Chief Justice that certain things are not in order, therefore he should take remedial measures. Unfortunately, our uh, efforts failed. Four sitting judges of the Supreme Court pushing the panic button, leading the biggest uprising in India's judiciary. Justice Chelameshwar, Justice Kurian, Justice Gogoi and Justice Lokur openly rebelling against the Chief Justice Deepak Mishra. Dropping a letter bomb, the judges made scathing allegations against the CJI. And when it went unaddressed, they reached out to the fourth pillar of democracy. The administration of the Supreme Court is not in order that unless this institution is preserved and it maintains its equanimity, the democracy will not survive in this country or any country. Therefore, we were left with no choice except to communicate it to the nation. Blame that Chalameshwar, Ranjan Gogoi, Madan Lokur and Kurian Joseph sold their souls. The judges accused the CJI of impropriety and of misusing his power to allocate cases to select benches. And even though the judges wrote a carefully worded letter, there were specific cases at the centre of this historic rebellion. The schisms are out in the open and it's camps within the top court of the India. The Supreme Court of India is currently witnessing a crisis like it has never seen before. With the top four judges of the Collegium, other than the Chief Justice of India, openly rebelling against the manner in which the Chief Justice is functioning and also the undercurrent is that there is indeed an interference from the executive which is hindering the cause of justice in the Supreme Court. The uprising has divided the judiciary, as some even question the judge's decision to hold a press meet, especially since one of the four happened to be next in line to be the Chief Justice. Uh, the President of India now also uh, should intervene and try to resolve um, this very well. Four judges of the Supreme Court should hold a press conference and come up with the grievances against the Chief Justice. I find this very, very disappointing and very distressing. The storm even hit the political corridors as Netas warned against a massive judicial crisis. This is a matter of governance and therefore the Prime Minister should offer his services. The people in our country lose faith in the integrity and impartiality and the independence of the judiciary. Then there's very little left of our democracy. There are such deep differences amongst uh, the honourable judges about how this court should function is uh, frankly a matter of, of, of uh, anguish and pain. So are important cases being given to select benches? Is the judiciary running on the whims and fancies of the Chief Justice? And is the government interfering with the judiciary? The CJI has many questions to answer because the rebel judges have sounded a code red alarm. It is democracy that is at stake if the judiciary does not withstand the quake. With Anusha Soni and Supriya Bharadwaj in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Joining me now to talk about what the Attorney General of India has just told us and this massive judicial crisis are some of India's foremost lawyers. I want to begin by introducing Prashant Bhushan and remember Prashant Bhushan is significant because the charges that were leveled by these four sitting Supreme Court judges are on the lines of what Prashant Bhushan has been saying for the longest time now. 
Also with us at this time is eminent lawyer Aman Lekhi. Gaurav Bhatia is representing the BJP. He's a lawyer himself. Uchwal Nikam is one of our foremost public prosecutors. And Atul Anjan is from the CPI. Remember, D. Raja went and met Justice Chalmeshwar. Huge questions about why left leaders are going about meeting the judge who did this press conference. I want to go across first and foremost to Prashant Bhushan because you'd stand vindicated. You know, you are one person, sir, who can claim vindication because now sitting judges are saying exactly what you've been saying. The Attorney General just told me that he believes that this crisis will get resolved. He said this in public, on TV. Do you believe adequate groundwork would have been done by now which could lead to a resolution of this crisis tomorrow? Well, I doubt that very much because, uh, you see, um, this is certainly very unprecedented for the four senior judges to go public and address a press conference on this. Uh, these are uh, very sober, very responsible as well as conservative judges. They would not do so had there been any possibility, had they seen any possibility of the matter being resolved without their having to go out uh, to the public. They tried, they wrote a letter two months ago about this issue, about the manner in which uh, uh, benches were being arbitrarily assigned, especially in political sensitive matters. They thereafter again uh, took up the matter with the Chief Justice on several occasions and most recently I believe uh, yesterday or this morning regarding this case of Justice Loya. And uh, uh, despite their efforts when nothing came out of it and when they saw that the Chief Justice was continuing to do this again and again that is misuse his powers as master of the roster to assign cases to hand-picked selected benches and mostly of junior judges and uh, ostensibly to achieve a particular outcome that they went public on this issue. So now, I don't think that this matter is going to be so easily resolved. You're of saying course, if the Chief Justice were to now say, okay, well, all right, from now on, I will adopt a clearly, totally transparent and rational manner for allocating benches and will not say that bring all politically sensitive cases before me so that I can assign them to handpicked benches, which is what appears to have been happening. If this kind of thing is going to stop and if some rational and transparent way is immediately worked out to allocate benches, etc., Possibly the matter could be resolved. Okay, but we've Otherwise, seen. Otherwise, I think we are headed for a much more serious crisis. You're but of course, this is only one of the issues. There are f uh, more serious. No, sir, I, I'll and build on it more one by one, Mr. Bhushan. I'll build with talk it. About I'll this build now, on this one, one on one. Let's take it one at a time about whether this crisis can be resolved tomorrow, which is what K.K. Venugopal, our Attorney General, also one of India's senior most lawyers, has just said. Now, Aman Lekhi is a very, very sharp legal mind. And a lot of what is being said today in public, Mr. Lakey, has been said in private. It's been said in the corridors of the Supreme Court, corridors of the High Court. People like Prashant Bhushan, Indira Jaising have been leveling similar charges, but they've been deemed mavericks as people who want to shake up the system. It's never been said ever by a sitting judge of the Supreme Court. When a sitting judge, not one, you know, you can say Justice Chalameshwar lost out in the seniority race to the General Deepak Mishra, so he holds a personal grudge. But you've got General Go uh, Justice Gogoi, who is next in line to be our Chief Justice. He is putting his career and his possible elevation on the line when he comes out and does this press conference. Is this to suggest that these four sitting Chief ju Judges believe that India's Supreme Court is compromised, that cases can be bent by selectively assigning those cases to judges who are quote-unquote compromised? Absolutely, in so far as this case is concerned, it reveals that uh, the judges are not only apprehensive this is so, the judges are convinced it is so and this is precisely the issue which I deal with. It's not so much the issues which have been raised, it's the manner in which the issues have been raised which is important. We are a normocracy, that is we are governed by norms, we are not a mobocracy, it's not an ochlocracy which is over there. I was surprised to have four senior judges of the Supreme Court address the press on an issue as significant as this and letting the people of India decide as to what has to happen. Now, I really am baffled by this particular comment because I don't know what role the people of India have in this particular uh, 
uh, issue and the controversy with the judges are actually raising from presuming whatever is said is correct uh, though of course there will be a contrary opinion also we really don't know what the chief justice has to say and whether what is being suggested is actually true or not that's a different matter altogether but the fact remains that in so far as these issues are concerned by raising them in the manner in which they have been raised the supreme court and for that matter the judiciary has been irreparably damaged now strangely the letter which the judge said uh, is not forthcoming with all details what pashan said is an elaboration of the letter and not necessarily the content of the letter and the letter give me a moment as i fix that connection concerned. i want to bring in reactions now from gaurav bhatia because not just are you an advocate at the supreme court you're also a spokesperson of the bjp and unstated in that press conference was the unmissable insinuation that the executive of the day which is the modi sarkar is excessively interfering through the chief justice in the manner in which cases are being allocated with the hope that politically sensitive cases are favorably disposed of now this is not a charge that prashant bhushan is leveling or kejriwal is leveling or rahul gandhi is leveling this charge comes from within from sitting justices of our supreme court gaurav those are very serious charges that the government now needs to deal with rahul uh, first of all i request you not to interrupt me in between because uh, what your channel is insinuating or reporting is objectionable i have the letter with me no way there is any allegation that there is in, uh, interference by the government or the executive rather it says that administration of supreme court is not in order second if it's about deciding politically sensitive cases i can give you number of examples of congress leaders and where cases have been decided in their favor we have to respect the institution and every judge who mans the institution the bjp has made it very clear that we are all for the independence of the judiciary and the law minister mr ravi shankar prasad also said that this is an internal matter of the supreme court because no other organ be it the legislature or the executive can interfere in the internal matters of the judiciary that is what the constitution prescribes the most objectionable part is that damage has already been done why is it that political parties like the congress and the tmc and the left trying to add fuel to fire why are they politicizing the issue i just saw the tweet of mamta banerjee where she alleges extreme interference of central government with judiciary is dangerous for democracy i am very proud of the fact that today bjp has acted in a very responsible manner because we believe in rule of law our democracy constitution of india and the judiciary whereas or during this difficult time when congress and tmc should okay. have also that's acted a good in a point. responsible manner that's a good point and i must and i must clarify and that is this not good for and, I, and i must make this very very clear nowhere did any of these four judges in that press conference or in not the letter word. they wrote said any say anything about the not executive word, interfering thank you for clarifying that's that that's the insinuation that is being drawn and the inference that's being drawn and the charge that's There being leveled be by no the political class like that. but you've got a good question and i want to put that words. question i just want to welcome respected somna chatterji uh, our former speaker of the lok sabha one of our veteran parliamentarians joining us on this broadcast but before i go across to somna da i have a question for the left and I, uh, atul anjan is joining us Why is D Raja going and meeting yes. Justice Chalameshwar? If this is actually about principles, if this is about institutions, Justice Chalameshwar has absolutely no business meeting D Raja or any other political neta. The moment D Raja goes to meet Chalameshwar, Chalameshwar meets D Raja. This becomes a personal grievance it's no longer about institutions it's no longer about whether those institutions can be addressed whether those concerns can be addressed by the government why are you politicizing this atul anja rahul ji this is not the first time such type of tremor in the supreme court has we are witnessing on the question of the appointment of the chief justice of justice a n ray such type was thing and at that point of time atal bihari bajpay the leader of the bharti janasang said it is the 
it is a death nail to the Indian Indian judicial system and all that. I do not want to go into the Justice Rama Swami case. I do not want to. No, let's come to today. Why is Chalameshwar meeting D Raja? Why is D Raja going and meeting him? So come to today. Forget what happened 30 years ago. Let's deal with 2008. I am coming. I am coming, my dear. I I no 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 no. This is all all interrelated. Today I just want to senior most judges of this country has made certain very settled questions against the present system which is working inside the Supreme Court. And as far as they say that uh, uh, government is not interfering, what Subramanian Swami says, Subramanian Swami as the BJP MP says that let Prime Minister should intervene into that. He doesn't have that to say that the, let the President of India should say. Here I want to say as far as the Communist Party of India is concerned, Whosoever meets to Jageshwar, it has nothing to do. It is he might have met in personal capacity, but if I as a party, this. we have as nothing to do with that. As a sitting judge of the I Supreme want Court, Justice Chalameshwar has no I, personal I, I, capacity. If he wants to make a point, it's a point to be made from where he sits. I don't, need, I don't sits. think that there is a necessity to meet such in such a time. No, no, I don't think that this is a time okay. to meet such type thing. I completely disapprove it. Okay, so that's a, that's a good point. But anyway, you disapprove of what the Supreme Raja has Court done. Judge. Okay, one second. Has Can I go across to Somnath Chatterjee, please? Somnath, welcome. He should have thought. He should How have disturbed thought are, are you by what you've seen today? How disturbed are you by the fact that four sitting judges have come out and said they have no faith in the Chief Justice? This is the kind of judicial rebellion we haven't seen ever. It's never erupted in the public for, forum in this fashion. Yeah. They are asking me? Yes, Somnada, I am asking yes. you, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, well, so far as Mr. Da Raja meeting uh, the la one of the learned judges uh, during a time, during the time when there is now what appears to be clear dissension amongst the Supreme Court judges and the, the the judge who met Mr. Raja is in the forefront. I think he should have avoided meeting a politician, although he may be his very good friend. But discussing with a political, responsible political leader of, of an important All India Party, and of, obviously to discuss a matter like this. They are not <laughs> discussing any friendly matter, matters of matters oh, absolutely. between friends. So, Mnath, what do you avoided. make of the crisis that confronts us? The fact that D. Raja should not have met Chalameshwar is very clear. I don't think anybody can argue to the contrary. Do you believe, as KK Venugopal just told us, that this crisis will get resolved tomorrow? Or do you believe the fissures run so deep that now to be able to heal the Supreme Court is going to be very difficult. Do you believe the image of India's judiciary and the highest court of this land have been tarnished in the eyes of the public forever? Well, I think so. Um, unfortunately, that is so. I don't know why they held a press conference where they were making an appeal to the people at large to intervene. When they have no such power to do that. Will it asking the government, was the, were they asking the government to interfere? That would be the very last day of democracy in this country. And uh, the judiciary is the most important, <coughs> according to me, a pillar of democracy, most important pillar of the democracy, all, uh, 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 apart from the executive. Okay. And now people having full faith in the judiciary will be, will have to decide amongst themselves now. We will have to decide okay. to whom to go to for redress of grievances. Thank you very much, Mr. Somna Chatterjee, for, for joining us. redress of grievances. Really appreciate you joining us and giving us your thoughts on this. Prashant Bhushan, you must respond to this. There are many who are watching this broadcast who will feel that these four judges have let down India's judiciary by coming to the what does it even mean when judges say we are coming to the people's court now these are not politicians who've got a charge against them and they'll say elections will decide janta will decide which janta will decide they're the judges they're supposed to show the way to the country when they come into the people's court is that not making a mockery of what judges are supposed to be doing Mr. Prashant Bhushan
So, there are two issues here. One is should the judges have gone public at all uh, on this issue that this tarnishes the image of the judiciary etcetera. You see if there is a problem within the judiciary or in the supreme court or in the administration of the supreme court which is having a grave impact on democracy and the future of our republic as they have said and I believe them and I know that uh, there are many cases which have been politically sensitive cases which have been sent to hand picked junior judges to achieve a particular outcome. Now, if that is the case then what are other senior judges who are privy to what is happening to do? They first write a letter to the chief justice asking him to resolve the matter and have a transparent and rational way of allocating benches. They then intercede with him orally on several occasions. When everything fails, should they allow this subversion of justice in this manner by the chief justice having a grave impact of democracy to continue unknown to the people or should they bring it out before the people so that thereafter whatever redress can be done. You see one redress ultimately in a democracy the people are the ultimate masters of a democracy. The people then devise what can be done. No, no, but for sir, example, look at what impeachment. You are saying, how now, can impeachment people decide is the only what the judges do? Sometimes this left. upturns what the judges yes. are supposed to do, what the judiciary is supposed to do. Uh, you've got Gaurav Bhatia who is itching saying, to come if, in, and if, my producers are telling me I need to take a quick break. So I'm going to take a very quick break. We've got very, very sharp legal minds, and you've got opinion coming in from different angles, and that's important because we're not taking sides. We are putting out the sharpest perspectives on both sides of the, this divide and we are leaving it to you, our viewer, to decide where you stand on this. Because remember, it's not about trying to spin the story this way or that, it's about reporting both sides of the story because clearly those judges felt suffocated enough after having tried internally to voice their grievances, not finding any redressal, that they finally came out and unleashed this judicial earthquake. Should they have done this? We'll debate that. The Congress is likely to do a press conference. Uh, former Law Minister Ashwini Kumar is joining us. I welcome him to this broadcast. Vikas Singh, another very senior eminent lawyer, is joining us. We'll go across to the both of them. When we come back on the other side of a very quick break, you're watching a continuing coverage of the biggest crisis that's hit Indian judiciary ever. We'll continue on the other side. Stay with us. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel, we know you would love to.